Hey guys, I'm John Setzler. Welcome back to the Kamado Joe Cooking Channel. Today, we're going to fire up our Kamado Joe and do something a little different. We are going to cook a pork picnic roast. We're going to cook it with just salt and pepper and we're going to turn the skin into some cracklings when we're done. So, let's get started. First thing I've done here is I've lit a fire in the center of the firebox, my Kamado Joe Classic. And I'm not going to put any smoking wood in there on this cook. We're going to set the divide and conquer flexible cooking rack in place with our heat deflectors here in the low position. And then I'm going to set each of the grill grates in the top position. But I am going to put a drip pan in here because I like to use a drip pan when I'm cooking stuff like this. So we're just going to set that in there. And we're going to let this grill come up to about 225 degrees. And to do that, I'm going to set the bottom vent open about a half an inch. And I'm going to close the slider down on the top vent to about halfway between the first and the second notch. And let this guy come up to temperature slowly while we get our meat ready. If I need to warm it up, I'll open the top vent more. If I need to cool it down, we'll close the top vent more. Here we have our pork picnic roast. This roast weighs just a little over eight pounds and it still has the skin on it, which is exactly what we want for this cook. We're not going to trim this roast at all. And this roast is highly underrated, I believe. This, this roast makes really good pulled pork barbecue, but it's a good bit cheaper than the Boston butt roast or the pork shoulder roast. The Boston butt or the pork shoulder is actually the shoulder of the pig. It's the bone that comes in that cut is the scapula or the shoulder blade. This is uh, down the arm. This is the humerus or the upper arm of the pig. Sometimes this is called an arm roast. And the bone that's in here, like I said, is the humerus. It's the upper arm. So that's what we have here. And this skin is something we're going to take advantage of on this cook. What I'm going to do to start with here is I'm going to score the skin and once I have that skin scored we're just going to flip this guy over because we're going to season this side first and I've made a seasoning blend here that's very simple I started out with a quarter of a cup of sea salt and one tablespoon of black pepper and we're just going to shake a liberal coating of that all over the side of the meat and I'm just going to rub that in really well and then we're going to flip the guy back over and do the same thing to the top side. We're going to cook this skin side up so we want to make sure we get a nice coat of that seasoning, the salt and pepper all over the top of this skin and all over the sides and as soon as our grill comes up to temperature this bad boy is ready to go. Okay our classics up the temp so we're going to put this roast right here in the middle of the grill. We're going to close this guy up, let it cook just like we would a Boston butt, and which means we're probably going to cook to an internal temperature here of nearly 200 degrees. So I'll probably be back here in 10 to 12 hours to show you what it looks like and have a look. Okay guys, we've been going right at 13 hours here and I apologize for the noise, but they are blowing leaves across the street. Uh, this roast is ready and we're through the first stage so I'm going to take this off and set it aside here on the side table of the classic and I'm going to wrap it in foil and just let it sit here for 30 minutes or so and I'm going to open up the vents on the grill and let the grill temperature come up to about 500 degrees. Okay guys, I have run the temp on the Kamado Joe Classic here up to about 550 degrees. I also removed the drip pan before I did that. You don't want to bring a drip pan full of grease up that hot. So we're going to set this roast back on here, close the lid, and let it go for 15 minutes or so, and we're going to watch what happens to this skin. Alright guys, we've been going about 15 minutes here, and... The skin has puffed up nicely on this. We've got some really nice cracklings on there. So I'm going to take this off and we're going to wrap it loosely in foil and let it rest for about 15 minutes. Okay guys, this is ready. And these pork skin, these cracklings are amazing. Nice crisp. We'll just pull one off of here. And... Mm, has a beautiful crunch to it. 
So what you do with a roast like this is you just serve this directly from the table and let your guests just pull the meat off of it because this is underneath these cracklings. You have just what is beautiful pulled pork and then you just pull it off with a fork and serve it right from the plate. So let's have a taste of this pulled pork. So let's give this a try while it's still nice and warm. Very good, delicious. And these cracklings are just amazing. Those have a beautiful crunch and you're gonna find yourself fighting over those. So let me give you some insight here. My friend Craig Tabor, you know him as Big Green Craig, helped me solve a problem. This is the second time I've tried this roast. The first time I tried it, the skin did not crisp up. It was leathery, chewy, it was just not good. I happened to run into Craig not long ago. I mentioned this cook to him, and he says it's your smoke. The smoke getting all over the skin keeps that skin from doing what it should do on a cook like this. So I decided to try it again on the Kamado Joe with no smoking wood. We didn't put any smoking wood on there, and uh, the skin came out perfectly. After the long, low, slow cook, the, the, the cracklings weren't quite there. The skin was good. But to puff that up and get a really nice crunch on it, you have to put it back on there at a high temperature for just a little while. So uh, you don't have to do that part on the Kamado if you don't want to. You can take it in and put it in the oven, but do take that drip pan out of there. Give this a try. Let me know what you think. Join us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Kamado Joe. Follow us on Twitter at Kamado Joe. And until next time, this is John Setzler with Kamado Joe Cooking Channel.